How's it going everybody? It's your boy homie G and I'm back. All right, my little homies, today's video is all about credit card tips. So let's get started. So once you turn 18, you're gonna have to figure out how to get a credit card. So if you're a student, you're gonna go to junior college or college, I want you to Google best credit cards for students. And then it's gonna pop out a bunch of articles. You're gonna click through them and find the cards that are best suited for you while you're going off to college. Now, let's say you're not gonna go to college and you're just gonna hang out at home or work right after high school. Then you're gonna wanna type on the Google bar, credit cards for no credit. And that will be just for you. You're gonna have your options uh, to apply for a credit card online. Now, whatever you do, little homies, do not get a credit card that charges you monthly or annual fees. That's a charge just to like use the issuer's credit card. And you're just throwing money away every time you uh, get a credit card that has annual fees or monthly fees. Do not do that. Now, if that's the only option because you've applied to other credit card issuers and they've denied you, they don't want to uh, uh, um, approve you for credit, then you might not have a choice and you might have to go with the credit card where you have to pay an annual fee. It could be like $45 a year or whatever uh, to use the card. So that's as a last resort, my little homies. Okay, two, get a card that has the lowest APR. Now, what is APR? That stands for annual percentage rate. Okay, it's like the interest you're gonna be charged, but a lot of people are confused by this. It's a very complicated term. It involves some math. You have to like figure out what's the interest per month, per billing cycle, and there's a whole bunch of math involved. I don't wanna confuse you, and I'm not gonna spend the time on this video going over APR. I just want you to understand that I want you to look for the credit cards with the lowest APR. Some of them are gonna offer you an introductory APR, like uh, 0% for 12 months. You might get that with an application to like a Home Depot credit card. They'll say, oh, no interest for 12 months. Okay, that's an introductory rate. But after that, after the 12 months are done, then you're for sure gonna have to pay some interest on charges that you carry over into the next billing cycle, which I'll talk about next. So, my little homies, get uh, credit cards with the lowest APR. You're most likely gonna be offered variable APR. It'll say V on the application online. And uh, you'll see that sometimes they'll offer you the uh, actual uh, variance uh, from 17 to 25%. This is just an example. But it'll tell you how low it will go and how high it will be. Uh, so that's okay. Just understand that this is not what determines why you want a credit card. Sure, it's a start. You want to definitely go for the lowest APR credit cards. But if you're paying your credit card uh, charges every billing cycle, then you won't really have to worry about uh, the APR so much. Uh, and then another option you might see is a fixed APR, example, 13%. And those usually come with secured credit cards, uh, okay? And they will probably ask you for a deposit. So you're putting in some money to get that rate and to use their card. All right, my little homies, let's move on. Number three, what do we got here? Utilis oh, <laughs> sorry. Utilization rate. So... What does that mean? Well, you're gonna use that credit card. Hopefully, you're not just gonna put it in your pocket and forget about it, right? Because that's not gonna help you build credit. But let's say you do go ahead, start using that credit card. Uh, you wanna make sure you don't go beyond 30% of your credit limit. Now, what does that mean? So they're gonna offer you a credit limit. Especially when you start out, it will be small, like a thousand bucks, 500 bucks, 2000 bucks. That's the maximum amount of money you can charge on that credit card for that billing cycle. All right, now, if you go beyond 30%, now here's an example, a really easy ex example here. Let's say it's $1,000, you buy uh, several products uh, at the different stores or at one store and you get close to 300. Okay, you're, you're about 30%. You wanna stop for the billing cycle. You wanna stop for that month. You don't wanna keep going, okay? Because that's gonna hurt your credit score. So you wanna keep it between 1% and 30%. Now, some people say a utilization rate, I read that one to 10% of your credit limit is the best way to go about building good credit. That might work, I'm not, I haven't paid a lot of attention to it, but I just know that 
You want to keep it below 30%. Don't go beyond that. Otherwise, it's going to hurt your credit score, my little homies. All right. Number four, pay on time. Come on. You should know. That's an obvious one now. That means you're going to get a billing statement uh, through email, most likely. You're going to click on it, and then it's going to show you the payment due date. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's when your, your uh, payment is due. So you want to pay in full as much as possible. Okay, that's good for your credit. Plus, you won't incur any interest charge for any balance you uh, carry over to the next billing cycle. Let's go back to this $300 amount that you charged. So let's say now you have your payment due uh, and you're gonna pay some amount. You, if you pay 50%, $150, you're gonna carry that $150 that you didn't pay into the next billing cycle. And then of course, you're gonna have some interest on that 150 because of your APR, which we talked about. Uh, but uh, you're gonna also be given options. So it's gonna say statement balance. A lot of people get confused by that. What does that mean, statement balance? That's the amount of money you have for that, for that statement, for that billing cycle, how much you've charged for that 28 to 31 day period, okay? But what if you use your credit card in the next billing cycle? Well, that's your current balance. That's how much you owe on the spot. And then lastly, you also have an option that says minimum payment. That's the least amount of money you have to pay that credit card issuer. So let's say for this 300, it might be like 15 bucks. And you're gonna be like, oh, how nice. That is so sweet. They're letting me pay only $15 for that $300 that I charge. Oh, my little homies. We'll get into this in a little bit, okay? But yeah, don't get fooled by that. Let's move on. Sixth tip here, avoid making the minimum payment. I just talked about that. If you're making that minimum payment repeatedly, that means you're paying the least amount on all those charges you have on your credit card balance. Okay, you're gonna pay the most in interest. By the time you're done paying off whatever you bought, something electronically or whatever you bought, a, a piece of clothing or a tire, you're gonna have paid a whole bunch more for that item than what you started with. Because when you pay the minimum payment, most of it just goes to paying interest. Very little of it goes to paying principal, which you have to understand. Principal payments go directly into paying off what you charge. So if you pay it all off in that billing cycle, you put it all into principal. That, is, that charge is gone, you've paid it off. But if you only paid like half of it or a quarter of it, then you're gonna incur interest. And so some of that's gonna go just to that. They're gonna get your money. This, these credit card issuers, they're gonna be happy. They're gonna be saying, great, he paid the minimum. If you keep doing that repeatedly, like every month, and you just keep charging and charging and charging, and all you're doing is paying the minimum payment, guess what that makes you, my little homies? That makes you a major dummy. That is not gangsta like lowriders, okay? You gotta pay it off as much as possible. All of it at once if you can, and if you can't, three quarters of it, 80% of it, pay off as much as you can because you don't want to pay that interest to that issuer. They're making money off you. You're not paying off your principal. You're losing money, throwing it out the window. That is not gangsta. All right, my little homies. This has been your boy, homie G. If you like this video, please like it. If you like my channel, subscribe. Tell all the other little homies to come and get the wisdom from the homie G. And I'm out. Peace.